Good morning, folks. Welcome to NYC CNC. This is part six in the video series on making the jacket dies. So we just left off in part five. We've got our a rough bore in here. What we're going to do in this episode is two things. We're going to bore the bottom half of the die out to its final ID of 704. And then what we're going to do is grab another piece of 1144 and we're going to experiment with polishing. We need to figure out what it takes to get a really good mirrored surface finish, and I want to see how much material I'm taking off in that process. So for starters, to bore this out to 704, what I did, I set my travel stop here. That way we don't go too far, because remember, this is a blind hole, and I don't want to jam my boring bar into the end of it. We only need to, to bore down to about a quarter inch before you see the uh, change in the raw material here. So what we're first going to do is we're going to take a sort of a light skim pass here just to get a, a, a new measurement based on our dial wheel here so that we can come in and take our final cuts. Let's start off though knowing that this is, you know, ballpark 645. So if you remember we drilled 5 eighths, so that's 625, and then we took about a 10 thou boring pass. So that makes sense that we're at... Uh, 10 thou radius cut is 20 thou, so we're at 645. At the risk of making mental mistakes, I always use a calculator. So if we need to go from 645 to 704, that's 29 and a half thou on the wheel here. So what we'll do first is we'll come in and we'll take about a 15 thou pass, uh, just approximate. And what that'll do is it'll give us a good ID. We can use our snap gauges and come in and then take the final pass, maybe two passes. So let's see here, let's get set up. Okay, I'm gonna set my wheel at zero and we'll come back five, 10, 15 thou. Now I might, be, I wasn't happy with the boring uh, service finish in part five. So what I might end up doing here is going part way, pulling out, cleaning out the chips, adding more lube and going back in. I, I don't love that. I guess I'm inclined to think I don't like that, but um, maybe it'll be okay. And uh, that's better than having a bad surface finish. That's for sure. Okay. So, got the right speed set. And here we go. Yeah, I can see the chip build up. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to disable the feed. I'm going to mark my mark here, 5 eighths. Come in, blow out the chips. Okay, only you know a quarter inch or so to go. Perfect. Much better uh, surface finish uh, already. I can tell. Actually, that's great. Okay, let's use our snap gauges here and see where that puts us. So the way you use a snap gauge is you pinch it in, snug it up, put it in the hole at an angle, now you pinch it shut, not hard but snug, then you pull it straight and that establishes your ID and you pull it out and let's see what we got here. Okay. So there is seven, five under, ten under, fifteen under, Okay, so 15, so that's <clears throat> 15 under 7, so we're at 685, 84, 83, 82, 81. So I get 681. Now 
let's do a sanity check on the hole just to make sure. I get 678 with my calipers. They usually a little usually measure closer than that, so I'm going to take a second reading here. Oh, you know what it is? I bet uh, there's a burr, probably just a hair of a burr, that the calipers are picking up, but these aren't. In fact, let's measure these. So I get you know, 680 on these. Okay, seven, five under, 10 under, 15 under, so there's 685. The light's making it hard to read my ticks here. Okay, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, yeah, 680. Okay, so that's close enough for now. So we're not gonna do this in one pass, but let's see here, 704 minus 680, 24 thousandths. So we're gonna take, you know, f let's take 15 of that and then leave ourselves nine to sneak up on it. I've gotta go 12 thousandths total to get to 704. I'll take eight thou on this pass. There's five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Okay. Okay, coming up here on our stop, and that'll do it. Definitely pleased with that surface finish. Let's see what our measurement is here. Actually, let's let's do the math the other way around. We were at 680, and we added we took 8 thou, which should be 16. Oops. So we should be at 696. Okay. So pinch them, pull it to the middle. You'll feel it loosen up. Okay, there's seven, one, two, okay, so I'm two under according to this, maybe two, I'm not reading the vernier here, but two and change, so that would be 698, we said 696, so I am 2,000 more than I thought. Let's see what our calipers read. Okay, huh, there we go. Did it again, and there's seven, one, two, three. So that's a thou less. So, um, you know, could be just variances in how I pull in the snap gauge out of there. Uh, we're, we're within a thou. I'd like to be, hold this pretty darn close though. So let's assume we're at 698, just to be conservative. So 0 0.704, 0 0.698, Minus is six thou divided by two. I've got to go three on my wheel here. So one, two, three. Off we go. <clears throat> okay, just about to touch. There we go. Now I moved the post in, that way when I backed the uh, boring bar out, we didn't scribe a line as we backed out. So let's see what we got here.
Okay, according to this, I'm reading, oops, according to this, I'm reading 701 and a half. Not enough. Yeah, still not going to get a good reading on those because the chip, although let's read just to double check. Yeah. Got to come another thousand. Now, the part of the problem I'm guessing, and I might be in a little pickle here, is that you don't want to always, you can't always take a one thou cut. Uh, sometimes you've got to go for it with a, you know, five or ten thou cut, which is too late for now. Um, these will just rub instead of cut at one thou. But nevertheless, I'm going to try to take a hair more here and see what happens. Seven oh four. That's awesome. So, well, uh, maybe, maybe seven oh three and a half. But that'll work. Uh, I will be honest. I don't love. Again, the surface finish. There's a slight amount of rippling, and that may just be because what you got to do is uh, really go for it and not do what I did, which is sneak up on it with little one thou passes. So let's hop on over and take a look at polishing. It's tricky to see in there, but. This is a zoomed in view where hopefully you can see there's some sort of micro ridges uh, inside this. So I don't love that, but we'll see. I don't, I don't think it's gonna cause a real problem. So next up, we wanna polish a piece of 1144. And we wanna do that for two reasons. One, I do wanna figure out how good of a surface finish or mirrored finish I can get on the part. And this is the top half that we just turned. There's nothing wrong with this. It's actually a great starting point, but we do want it to be a mirror-like, and that's to help the punch and the die. Not this piece here, which is part of the blank. This is just the bushing, but not the blanking part of our, our die set up here so much as the drawing part. The more mirror the finish you've got, the easier it's going to be to get the uh, newly formed copper cup to release off the punch and outside of the die. The other thing we want to do we want to figure out what our plan of attack is. I'll, we've got we've got sandpaper in both sheet form and strip form. We've got lapping compound, clover compound, polishing cream, and then this over here is a uh, buffing kit that would go. You put a, you put this on your buffing buffer, and you use these uh, emery and other compounds to buff to a finish. Uh, my plan is just to try using sandpaper. I'll start with a low grit, you know, 220 or something, and progress up, and then probably just use the, the moss. I've done that before on other types of steel and had good luck. I won't get into the other compounds here. But what we also want to do is we want to use our mic here and figure out how much uh, material we have to remove to get there. Using polishing cream isn't going to remove any measurable amount of material. Using 220 sandpaper can, uh, you know, to the tune of a few thousand. Okay, let's take our piece out. Okay, grab our spare chunk, wipe the chips off. If you only, if you always loosen the same two jaws on a four jaw chuck and you tighten back down, you should get pretty close back to where you were. Okay, that's plenty enough real estate to work with uh, to practice our uh, polishing. And that's, you know, certainly a similar surface finish to what we've got on our dye body. So now I'm going to clean up the lathe, get a towel over it, and get ready to start uh, sanding. Okay, it might be hard to see the lines on the mic. Okay, so this would be four, uh, excuse me, one four fifty, one inch four hundred and fifty thou. So we are about, we're three, you know, we're three, I'm going to call it three, yeah, I'm going to call it, it's all about 
consistency of the feel here. So five is way too much. It's really three and a half. So we're gonna call it three and a half. Sanity check here. Yep, so 1.45, three and a half. I'm gonna write that down and then we're gonna start sanding. I always write it down because you get distracted. This may take some time. And if you forget your number, or you're not confident you remember it, it's no fun to start over. Um, I'm also sort of entering into territory that I'm not really as familiar with here. Looking forward to what you guys have to say. I know the way you would really do this is probably a, a surface grinder or a rotary grind this. I don't have that ability, which is why we're using sandpaper. Um, you wanna be safe when you do this. So you wanna generally pull out and not push in so that if it breaks, you don't slug, throw your hand into the jaws and you'll be in the hospital with a broken finger. Um, and you just wanna be careful and take it slow. So let's uh, go ahead and turn the machine on here and see what we got. Don't uh, overuse your sandpaper after it builds up. Um, after it builds up, it's no good. It's just rubbing. It's not cutting. So that's actually looking great. I'm really happy with that as a first step. You know, unfortunately, I don't know. Um, my grandfather gave me that strip, and he these are his uh, set of mics that I'm using as well too. Which I again, I just love using uh, tools like that that I know have family history to them and have been. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, wiser, older folks have imparted their knowledge and expertise into the tool. So that's great though. You can tell that that's gonna be a good um, surface finish to start with. In other words, if you've got ridges from your cutting, you're gonna have a really hard time unless you use like an 80 grit and get them down smooth. Um, sorry, what I was saying is I don't actually know what grit this roll is. It doesn't seem to say on it. Um, and it feels, honestly, it feels like it's a 320. So that's uh, a bit lighter than I would normally start with, but I got a great surface finish on my first, on my cutting pass, so that's proven to be okay. So I'm gonna take another one with 320 here, and then I've got some sheets of 400 and 600, and we'll step up from there. Okay, let's actually measure and see where we're at. So there's, okay, so there's, okay, we're at two and a half. So we took off a thousandth doing that which is great. That's, you know, it took a little while. I used two strips of paper for quite a few seconds of sanding, and that was only a thousand, but it was still a thousand. Now I bet as we step up, we won't take much more. I've got some strips of uh, 400 and 600. Let's see what that does. It'll be fun to look at this on the video footage here and see how it progresses grit by grit. Um, looks good to me though. Let's try the 600. This stuff will build up so quickly, you can't use it for very long. Starting to see the mirror in the part of the sandpaper itself. That's good. Okay, last strip. This is looking really good. I bet we're gonna see the real shine pop next step here when we use the polishing cream. First, let's take a look and see if we moved. 
We were at one, uh, four, five, two and a half. And we did move. I can see, again, this doesn't read in, uh, I have a vernier to read in tenths, but I am just ever, I'm on the two mark. So all of that was probably half a foul. Okay, ready for the polishing cream. I always get excited for this step. Hopefully it'll really pop on us. I wash my hands before I start this just to uh, get all the grit and stuff off. I actually probably shouldn't lay this. Uh, let's actually dump our towel here with all the sandpaper residue on it. Okay. Make sure it doesn't catch. Now we will put a little polishing cream on our cloth. What I'll do is rub some of it over here by hand. Okay. Okay, we've got enough on there. Now we'll go ahead and turn the machine on. I'm going to slow it down a little here. Eyeglasses on. You want to be careful this rag doesn't grab on itself and whip around. In fact, we're going to slow it down yet again just to be safe. Okay, it's not a perfect mirror, but it's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. You can see in the camera, I'm waving my hand in front of it. Let's get up closer here and look. So now that we're up close, you can see there are some, you know, lines. I think the, the way to make this better is actually to start, I'm guessing, with a little bit of a lower grit to uh, get some of those out. But you can see my arm here, and you can even make out my fingers. So I'm pretty darn happy with that. And also, equally importantly, we know that we took off about one thou using these strips of sandpaper, and we took off about half a thou using the 400 and 600 grit sandpaper. I've also got higher grit sandpaper. I'll try that and see if that improves it. Not that this is, again, a problem. And then let's take one final micrometer measurement. I'm sure it didn't move with the uh, polishing compound, but nevertheless. We were at 452 even. Yeah, hasn't budged at all. Anyways, we're gonna call it a day for that. That's part six. Hope you've enjoyed, folks. If you do, please subscribe. Comment below, what do you like, what do you not like? Otherwise, stay tuned for part seven. Thanks, folks.